This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Thursday, March 5th, 2020. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. There was a high-speed chase down 97 and out Route 170, ultimately ending in a fatal crash at the Cancun Cantina, which is right there on Route 176 and Telegraph Road in Hanover. According to the Maryland State Police, there was a Chevrolet Silverado that was involved with a hit-and-run accident with a Honda Civic. The pickup truck took off. The Honda Civic started to chase after them. They did pass a state trooper that was just wrapping up on a traffic stop, and the trooper tried to stop them and began to follow them. He did see them turn onto Route 176, which is Dorsey Road, and following them, ultimately, he came across the crash scene at 176 and Old Telegraph Road. The Chevrolet Silverado had struck a utility pole, which had been severed. The driver of the Silverado was pronounced deceased a little bit later on in the evening. He was taken to the R. Adams Cali Shock Trauma Center by Anne Arundel County EMS. And the Honda Civic driver told investigators at the time that the Silverado had struck his vehicle and he drove after the truck in an attempt to obtain a license tag number. Police did say they did observe minor damage to the Honda Civic. Well, a little bit later on, the state police have charged the driver of the Civic with negligent homicide, criminally negligent manslaughter, fleeing and eluding, negligent driving, reckless driving, and speed greater than reasonable and prudent. He had an initial hearing yesterday and was held without bond. He has been identified as a 31-year-old male from Baltimore, and the driver of the pickup truck has been identified as Mark Wheland, 43, of Severn, Maryland. Good news for Anne Arundel Medical Center. They have just opened up a new facility. It is called the J. Kent McNew Family Medical Center. They held a ribbon cutting yesterday, and it is the hospital's new mental health hospital, which plans to open its doors to patients a little bit later on this month. The new center is located in Annapolis, right off of Riva Road. It's on the same campus as the Pathways, which is Anne Arundel Medical Center's substance use and co-occurring disorder treatment facility. It is a 16-bed facility that will care for up to 900 patients a year who normally would be transferred out of the area. It offers an inpatient mental health care, a psychiatric partial hospitalization program, intensive outpatient programs, residential and outpatient substance and use services, referral and care coordination to community-based treatment and support services as well. Now, this is not an emergency facility. You cannot walk in there and get help. You do need to get a referral from a hospital. You do need to present yourself voluntarily, and you do have to meet certain criteria for admission. But it is a 56,000 square foot for story building, which is the culmination of years of hard work and fundraising and a much needed addition to the health system here in Anne Arundel County. Here's a story that might piss off some Ravens fans. The New England Patriots head coach will be given the key to the city at the Navy Johns Hopkins lacrosse game on Saturday, March 14th. Mayor Buckley will present the key to the city to the coach during halftime of the game, and he is the first person ever to receive a key to the city of Annapolis. Upon hearing this, Belichick said, I love the years I spent growing up in Annapolis and at the Naval Academy, and I always look forward to returning. I am a proud Annapolitan. Mayor Buckley said, I simply love the fact that the winningest coach Coach in the NFL history comes back to Annapolis to watch college lacrosse. Now, Belichick was raised here in Annapolis, where his father, Steve, was a coach, scout, and physical ed structure at the Naval Academy for more than 30 years. He did graduate from Annapolis High in 1970, where he did play both football and lacrosse. If you would like to go see Belichick get the key to the city, and I'm not quite sure what that key actually starts or whether he even opens up City Hall, but We'll find that out on the 14th. You can get tickets at NavySports.com. You probably should be able to pick them up the day of the game. They are $10 for adults, $5 for students. And, of course, that will be played at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium. Hey, Eastport Elementary and Mead Middle School need some help. WTOP is sponsoring a Click for Kids contest. And up for grabs is a $10,000 grand prize plus a $7,500 first prize and a $5,000 second place prize. The voting is open through March 11th, and you can just go to WTOP.com, search for Click for Kids, and then just pick Anne Arundel County for the school district, pick which school you would like to vote for, put in your name and email address, and you're set to go. The competition is not terribly stiff, so they stand a good chance. And boy, I'll tell you, even $5,000, $7,500, or $10,000 will go a long way to helping out both of these schools. So please go on there. Go to WTOP, search for Click for Kids, 
and give Eastport Elementary or Mead Middle a vote. After you spring ahead on Sunday and you set your clocks forward, make sure you're heading downtown for the Annapolis annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. That's happening on Sunday, March 8th. Yes, we do know that that's before St. Patrick's Day, and there's a reason for that. John O'Leary, who's the organizer, decided that most bars and restaurants don't need any help on St. Patrick's Day, so he decided to do it a week earlier when they might be able to use the help. Also, it allows him to get different units to come into the parade that normally would be in Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington, or maybe even New York if it was held on St. Patrick's Day. It is a slow time of the year. Restaurant week will have just ended, and it is one of the city's largest parades. It'll be begin at 1 p.m. up there at Maryland Hall. It'll come down West Street around Church Circle, down Main Street, and end up in a festival down at City Dock. It's expected to draw more than 15,000 people. And about that festival down at City Dock, that's called Shamrock the Dock, and it's the second year that they're going to be doing that. You're going to have two bands that will be playing, We're Not Handsome and Dublin 5. That gets underway at 1 o'clock, just as the parade is kicking off, but goes till 7 p.m. on Sunday night. So, After the parade, you want to walk on down to City Dock, spend some time downtown, and have a great time at a pop-up festival. You need to find out more information. You can go to naptownevents.com. So stick that on your calendar. All right, that's it for the news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net for updates to these stories and more as they come in throughout the day today. If you're someplace you can give us a rating or a review, please do that as well. And let your friends and family know about us too. It is Thursday, so we have Trevor with your Annapolis Makerspace Maker Minutes. And as we have every day, we've got George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. All of that's coming up in just one minute after this brief message from Solar Energy Services. Hey, Annapolis, Eastern Shore, and Anne Arundel County. My name's Rick Peters, and I'm the president of Solar Energy Services in Millersville, Maryland. Need a new job in the new year to help take you in a different direction? Maybe you aren't feeling fulfilled in your current job and want to be part of the excitement and growth of the clean energy industry. Consider coming to work for Solar Energy Services and give yourself a new career and fresh start at a company that not only offers competitive pay and benefits, but also cares about our employees as much as we care about our customers. That says a lot because we've been in business for over 40 years and we know how to provide five-star service. Visit solarsaves.net or call 410-923-6090 today. We are hiring immediately for solar installers, drafting specialists, and commercial project managers as we prepare for another great year. Are you up for the challenge? Apply today. Sunshine's a waste. Sunshine, sunshine, nothing else can make me feel so fine. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Thursday, March 5th. Yesterday was nice and sunny across the Annapolis region, although it was a bit breezy at times. And today should be nice as well, though a bit cooler with temps in the low to mid-50s for afternoon highs. More of the same tomorrow with sunny highs around 50, with a bit of a repeat on Saturday before temps warm again on Sunday, with plenty of sunshine and highs near 60 degrees. From there, temps will warm even more early next week with highs likely in the 65 to 70 degree range, further signaling that winter is definitely over and spring is here to stay as we spring ahead this Sunday with a return to daylight saving time at 2 a.m. on Sunday morning. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching the Apple or Google App Stores for DCMDVA Weather and also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. When a ring from the United States Naval Academy comes into Zachary's for a center stone, it always makes us wonder, where's this one going? Where's this one been? A nuclear sub in the North Atlantic? A carrier deck in the South Pacific? The moon? 52 astronauts are Academy graduates from Iwo Jima to Okinawa. Corregidor to the Coral Sea, Midway to the Persian Gulf, Congress to the White House. These rings go where America goes. 73 that went to war were awarded the Medal of Honor. But wherever they go, wherever they may serve, our admiration goes with them. Zachary's. Online at Zachary'sJewelers.com. More than a jewelry store, a jeweler. Every week, makers, crafters, and educators hold events all over the area. 
Highlighting some of those, here's our Maker's Minute, brought to you by Annapolis Makerspace. Hey, this is Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. This weekend at Downs Park, both Saturday and Sunday, they're doing a maple syrup demonstration. Watch the old-time process and learn the history and techniques of making maple syrup. Also this weekend, but down in London Town Gardens in Edgewater, they're doing a spring hearth cooking workshop. Explore food and recipes from the past. Learn historically accurate cooking techniques while cooking on an open fire. Recreate recipes from 17th, 18th, and 19th century sources, including herb-roasted chicken with mustard sauce, peas pottage with fresh-made vegetable broth, farmer's cheese, savory vegetable tart, hot buttered crab with toast points, as well as salad with fresh greens and herb dressing. And up in Owings Mills, registration is open for Project Steam Maryland Summer Camp 2020 for first through fifth graders. Camp activities with certified teachers include, but aren't limited to, Minecraft, traditional and digital art, computer science and game design, 3D printing, day trips, sculpture, reading comprehension, swimming, math, Lego robotics, science, chess, sports, and fashion and engineering. At Art Things this week, on Saturday, they're doing a winter watercolor with Rob Wood. Open to all levels. This workshop offers a hands-on approach to painting with expression and ease, without being hampered by the media. On Sunday, there's the Art Things Sunday series, Color Theory with Acrylic. Learn basic color theory and practical applications in acrylic while creating several small paintings. And then on Monday, they're doing a mixed-media portrait workshop. Create a portrait using a variety of media creating textures to use with your portrait, and layer them to achieve depth. Tomorrow at Whole Foods in Annapolis, they're having a time-honored handmade pasta making class. Making your own fresh pasta dough at home offers a great sense of fulfillment because it's made with your own hands. The dough will be more porous, allowing the pasta sauce to be better absorbed. Learn how to make and cook pasta as well as create traditional pasta sauces. In the past, they featured workshops from Ray of Light Studios, but for the last few weeks, their classes have been sold out so fast that I couldn't even really mention them here. Just go and check out some of the workshops they have planned, and register early if you want to get a spot. This week at Art Farm in Annapolis. On Saturday, they're doing a Turkish marbling day. Learn how to make beautiful designs on the surface of water using traditional materials, then transfer that design to a couple of sheets of quality paper and using the larger tray onto a linen tea towel. On Monday, Art Farm is doing another first exposure digital photography workshop. Part one focuses on understanding your camera, aperture and ISO settings, lenses, as well as creating an exposure. And then on Wednesday at Art Farm, their intro to improv for adults starts back up. This is a weekly exercise in improvisation and quick thinking. At the Anne Arundel County Public Library System this week, on Saturday at Mountain Road is their Magic the Gathering Club. A Monday in Linthicum is Book Lab, Can I Eat That? by Josh David Stein. Experiment with books, talk about them, and work on a STEAM project that relates. In this session, the world is full of strange and wonderful things, some of which you can eat and some you can't. Read the book, then explore some weird things you can eat. On Monday at Severna Park, there's their Minecraft Club, including Minecraft for Rookies. On Tuesday in Odenton is STEAM Tuesday with a different STEAM activity each month. On Tuesday at Brooklyn, Brooklyn Park is slime time. Make your own slime to take home. And then Tuesday at Maryland City, they're doing a real-world STEM challenge. Take on a variety of real-world challenges by building STEM solutions. Wednesday at the Crofton Library is Nature Explorers Club. Get a close-up look at a piece of our planet. Each month, they'll investigate an aspect of the ecosystem through presentation, conversations, active games, and hands-on activities. And finally, Wednesday at the Odenton Library, it's Girls Who Code, a nonprofit organization which aims to support and increase the number of women in computer science, where you can learn basic computer programming skills from members of the Fort Meade Alliance. At Unallocated Space in Severn this week, tonight for InfoSec Night, they're doing Defending the Home Like the Enterprise, with our homes being more and more connected. This talk will cover some things you can do to secure your home against possible cybersecurity issues, including how to provide a safer environment for tablets and other internet-connected widgets and doodads, mobile device management, and how you can use it to control your family's devices and their security and more. Also check out Unallocated's Project Night on Mondays, and their Open House and Lock Picking and Lock Sport Night on Wednesdays. At Pogno's Learning Lab and Coder Kids Club in Crofton this week, on Monday they're having another Schools Out Mini Camp. Kind of a sampler of their regular clubs and camps, featuring 3D VR AR Club, Arts and Crafts Club, Builders Club, Coder Kids Club, Drone Club, Gamer Club, Robotics Club, Steam Club, Young Inventors Club, and YouTube Stars and Animators Club. Be sure to check out all of their regular clubs and camps as well. And this week at Annapolis Makerspace, just a regular calm week with not a lot going on. We have our regular woodworking open night on Wednesdays and electronics open night on Thursdays. And you can catch me tonight and every Thursday night at Annapolis Makerspace on Renard Court for Electronics Night. And you can find links to all of these events at the Annapolis Makerspace website at makeannapolis.org. Whether you're making art, software, sawdust, or just a mess, chances are you're already a maker. This has been Trevor from Annapolis Makerspace with this week's Maker Minutes. What are we going to do about Mom? What kind of care does Dad need? How much will it cost? Who will take care of them? These are the tough questions that come with aging parents. Bay Village Assisted Living and Memory Care can help. We have the experience and the resources to help you find those answers, to help you gain peace of mind, 
we can answer the when, the where, the how, and everything in between. Give us a call or stop by for confidential, free assistance. We're here for those conversations, and maybe it's time you were too. Bay Village Assisted Living and Memory Care, a new community designed with Annapolis in mind. Visit our sales and information center at 947 Bay Ridge Road or online at bayvillageassistedliving.com. We know these are hard conversations and we're here to help when you need us. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.